How we doing? Oh, Tone Bell. Hello. What's happening? How are you, man? <sighs> going through the motions, baby. Going through the motions. How you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling pumped, jazzed. It's, <laughs> it's hump day. Can't complain, man. Can't complain. I yeah, like yeah. Uh, I like your back. It almost looks like you're backed up against a wall, but it, yeah, that's, this is this is a sheet in a corner. I love it. Yeah, man. Got to be more professional. You know what I mean? Like, I got to get these wrinkles out though. <laughs> uh, I thought you were in an alleyway. Just it looks so real. Yeah, man. You know you got to get the you got to get the look stops stops. Like, it looks like a little bit of light up there. It's the best six dollars I ever spent on Amazon. Oh my god. Oh wow, that's pretty good too. Because I uh, I tried to fill mine up with sound panels, but I couldn't afford to fill the whole thing. So I've got yeah, you got like eight up there, but it's very abstract. Yes. Yeah. I was trying to go for like a Picasso-esque type atmosphere, but very so condensed, bland. a lot of geometric. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I just got to liven up the colors because I've got the pasty white and then the beige and then the black. So maybe add a green or something in there. Yeah. A little purple, yeah. a little purple, a little green, a little pop color. Something. I love that. I love yeah, that. Man. Well, welcome to the show. My name is Stefan, by the way, and it's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Likewise, man. Likewise. Thanks for having me. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I've, uh, I've prepared a little intro for you, thrown in a little okay. spice, some oregano, some stuff. So if you want, I can lead with that and then we can just jump into it. Yeah, that, that works. That works. Awesome. Awesome. All right. <clears throat> Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of a comedy advice podcast where we give you advice sprinkled in with some comedy today. You've got me, Stefan Satani, just like always. And I've also got ready for you a special guest he's a comedian that's performed all across the country and he's got a showtime special can't cancel this he's an actor most recently in the film the united states versus billy holiday available on hulu and if you have a tv he's probably been in your house but you're the one watching him so you're the creepy one everybody please welcome <laughs> tone bell wah, 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 wah. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> oh man how tone it's a pleasure to have you how are you today Oh, man, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Oh, uh, likewise. And, you know, I love the new, well, maybe it's not a new look, but I've usually seen you in the beard. I know in the United States versus Billy Holiday, you had the, the mustache and the cool yeah. slicked back hair, but um, you're rocking it, man. It looks good. Yeah, I, uh, I, I took it down to, I was doing a, um, an audition for another role recently. And, and so I took nice. it down just to, uh, you know, have that look so they can you know, people don't have an imagination for some reason in Hollywood. So it's if 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 you don't give it to them, then they're like, I could. Does he have a face under the bit? You're like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> Jesus Christ! It's like well, we do realize Eddie Murphy plays like six characters a movie, right? It's it's there's no imagination, and so it's oh, like if they, if they don't see it, sometimes they don't. I don't know if he can pull that off. Like, oh, he does have a chin. <laughs> and so it's like sometimes you just gotta give them so yeah I'm, I'm in the midst of a grow back right now oh nice and um you know with the mustache you look great i was gonna say and it is interesting that you mentioned about the chin because i was looking on social media and there was a guy where they were saying that that beards are like makeup for men and this guy he had the long hair this beautiful beard just looked like a rugged mountain man shaved the beard he had no chin and he was tucked in like this okay it's it's gross <laughs> <laughs> it can be so gross because I haven't said, I mean, before, before I shaved for, uh, I guess, Sylvie's Love and U.S. versus yeah. Billy Holiday, that same year I played yeah. Richard Pryor, I was like, I had never shaven in Hollywood before that. So, I mean, I, I did about eight years of usually a variation of having facial hair. And yeah. then that one year I was basically shaved all year and it was like, oh, fuck, I haven't seen my face in forever. Hopefully, hopefully it's still intact, you know, and uh <laughs> But but yeah, it uh uh I don't mind it. I don't mind it. But I but I do realize that like, my face gets way cold now. I like it's even all, all these outdoor shows. I'm like man, I, I'm I'm so used to like grabbing it or touching it or brushing it or combing yeah. it or something. And then for months, I've just been like, oh damn it, it's gone. Oh man, I, you know what? I live in Phoenix, so I don't notice it that much. But when I was in New York. I remember the when I would walk out in the cold after shaving my beard because I went full hipster there. The, the okay. long hair, the beard, home brewing kombucha, and then I shaved it, <laughs> and and then it was uh, it was freezing, so I had to yeah. lift up my scarf to. I do like I I love like I got a couple like fleece line masks, and I mean I just leave my mask on now because I'm just like oh my face is my face is too cold for all this shit. I'm like I love my mask now. 
<laughs> oh, that is incredible. And I wanted to ask, because that was one of the changes that you made. And and you did an incredible job on the United States versus Billy, Billy Holiday. Oh, yeah. My wife and I, we ended up watching it last week. And it was very powerful, gripping. Yeah. Yeah. And you you did a great job at uh, being someone that I felt was not a great guy. But um, you ended up doing a great job. And I, I know that you were talking about the mustache changing for the role, but you also were going back into the 40s. So yeah. what were some other things that were interesting or noticeable about getting into that role? I mean, well, one, it, it kind of happened last minute. Um, uh, I auditioned for another part for that movie that I, that I uh, didn't get, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. And then Lee mm -hmm. called me about a month and a half, two months later, and was like, hey, I got, oh, he called me on a Friday. It was like, I got a, I got an idea for you. Do you think you can pull this off? It's a little, it's, it's a little darker than you used to, but if you remember this character, yeah. can, you, can you read this right now? And I was like, Lee, I am drunk at a bar right now. Also, is this Lee Daniels? You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, I'm hammered. And he was like, he goes, yes. He's like, I was like, I'll read it first thing in the morning. He's like, don't read it now. I was like, did you not hear me say I'm drunk? <laughs> I, a, I was like, as soon as I sober, I will wake up and I'll read this and I'll call you right back. So I called him Saturday morning and I was like, yeah, yeah I can, I can sink into this. And someone had already been cast in that role and he just had a different idea for what it was. So it wasn't a performance thing for this dude because he, he, the guy who had originally got the role hadn't been on camera. They hadn't, they hadn't shot anything, but Lee just had a different idea of, of who this guy was and, and, and wanted something else. And uh, he just called me Saturday morning. He's like, can, can, can you do this? Can you, can you, I want to know if you can pull this off. And I was like, one, I'm up for the challenge. And yeah, yeah like I, it's, I've been playing the nice guy for years now between TV and a couple of films. And I was like, yeah. I really want to, yeah, I'd like to step into this. So like, I mean, I, I got the call Friday and was in Montreal on Sunday. And so, Whoa. Whoa. And, then and then shot that Monday. Yeah. So it was, it was very different, but um, yeah, it was, Dang. it was, it was nice. It was nice to to switch it up, but also, you know, quick research and, and like, you know, watching some yeah. playback and, and just, you know, getting the feel of the of the era and, and performance wise from everybody else and just trying to put these pieces together of, you know, it's, it's I've, I've said this in a couple of interviews, but it's it's yeah. difficult to be. I mean, I'm a silly guy, you know, I'm going to do comedy for a living, so it's it's different to. Have to have to transform into someone who doesn't mind putting his hands on a woman so easily you know yes. and yes. so yes. that means it's pretty it's pretty dark you know and, and to stay yeah. in that and, and um and and to know that this this happened you know to mm -hmm. know that this is like this this is not a made-up guy this guy exists and and right. uh and and watching how powerful you know andre's performance was and and even while we're working before we even you know before we even saw the end it's a different thing, man. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, we're shooting for six, eight, 10 hours and then, you know, you, you get it and then you go, all right, I need to go get away because I don't like being this guy. You know, you, I'm like, I need to go grab a glass of wine after this and just, you know, it, it, it feels weird to, to have to, you know, I don't know. It's just, it, yeah. It was, it was, it was challenging, but um, yeah, but, but, yeah. but a good, but a good, you know, Nobody, I don't know, they, even the cast was, was, you know, everybody had some parts, you know, and, and, right, and, right. Uh, but yeah, after, you know, once we cut for the night, it was like, whew, all right, I got, I got about eight hours before I have to think about being this guy again, you know what I mean? And so you kind of pause that intention and, and then come back to it. So yeah, very different, very different. Dang. I, and I, I just, what you were saying too of like you got the call on friday you were in montreal on sunday hopefully you didn't pass by the other guy that got rejected in the airport no right? no no he no he left like the day before I think. <laughs> okay good good um uh, but no i mean just getting into that that quickly and then exactly like you said doing things that i i mean i know that you, you were great on disjointed whitney these lighter type pieces amongst many others but like going into this role that's not only serious but it's just doing things that you wouldn't do as a person i hope um but you know and, and seeing it it's like even seeing the things not not just your actions but like the um oh, i forgot her name but like billy holiday you know, yeah 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 and um just hitting the heroin and it was like you don't see that every day 
And yeah. even in movies, it's it's rare, depending on what your genre is uh, of preference. But it's it's just heavy stuff, and to be able to pull it off in a way that's still gripping and and it just keeps you watching is is really cool. So I well, thought it's, it was it's like I think I, I think they did a great job of of uh, the visualization, and then not. Yeah sticking with just the glamour that we know and you know what i mean i think everybody's heard yeah. strange fruit at least once in their lifetime especially yeah. if you're this age but mm -hmm. knowing what it's attached to and then and, and seeing it in this in in this visualization is just different you know what i mean it's it's it means more now mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so it's it's uh uh yeah man I, I think everybody did a fucking unbelievable job oh man it, yeah it was absolutely incredible and i yeah. i wanted to circle back to on i know like your true love i know you're a phenomenal actor as well and, and i think you're a phenomenal comedian and um, i watched a lot of your stand up and and watched your your special and um, can't cancel this which i love, <laughs> I love the name yeah um, but, I <laughs> but i wanted to ask too i mean I know that you're from Georgia you went to Texas and you started to get into stand up there mm -hmm. and and I know you also worked for Anheuser Busch as a marketing mm -hmm. and events coordinator, manager. Yeah. yeah. And and I know that you ended up. You should probably be saying this more than me, but <laughs> I, I was going to say <laughs> I, I, I love I, your research. I love your research. Go ahead. <laughs> no, it's really really cool, and and I loved learning about how you know you ended up separating from the company and ended up going all in, going to LA and yeah. trying to to make it. And obviously you've done great things, but when did you think, or what moment did you think, okay, you know what? I'm just going to commit a hundred percent to comedy acting and just go. Um, it was, I, th I think uh, to 2010 is when I kind of made, I was like, fuck it. Yeah, Fuck I it. I had done this. Um, the program I ended up winning in 2011 slash 12 was was a uh, back then it was called NBC Standard for Diversity. Yeah. And, yeah. And it was one of those programs where where you know it just gave you know non white talent an opportunity to stand out in front of you know showcase style in front of you know network executives and stuff. And I'd seen mm -hmm. some people I'm a fan of and now peers with have a break in their career of. of you know, with this program. And so I kind of studied that in 2010, I actually just saw him, but uh, 2010, we were down in San Antonio competing. And um, yeah. and I made it to the semifinals there in the, um, in the host forgot my name. <laughs> oh, no. And who, we're buddies now, but I was like, and it was, like, I got to make the most of this and I fucking murdered. Like I, I, I mean, for, for what that, what I fucking went to work and, uh, and, and then no call for the finals. Couldn't believe it. I was like, what oh, didn't no. I do? What didn't I do? And so I, I started looking at, you know, past winners and stuff and just like who made it to the finals. And I started kind of like breaking down their sets and, and like, what did they have? And so I formulated like my thing that next year, 2011, but going into that 2010 is like that fall is, is when I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, when I get the opportunity, I'm going. And nice. I've been trying to get laid off from Anheuser Bush for a while. People were getting laid off and moved departments and stuff like that. And I just could mm -hmm. not get laid off. Like we were, the company was being acquired and I'm like, I should be losing my job soon. And it was like, they couldn't get rid of a black dude. I was like one of the only black people in my region, in my department. And I was like, Jesus Christ, this is the first time a firm of action worked against me. Like, I, like, I, <laughs> oh my God. I was like, oh, I wow. want to get, I stopped working, dude. I, I stopped turning reports. I was just having fun. And then uh, yeah. I was going through a breakup, August, uh, April 11. And yeah. then they finally laid me off. And then I was like, I'll be back on Monday. I will give you all your shit. I cannot wait to give you this shit back. Key fob and the, and the, laptop and the company car and a credit card and all that kind of stuff. I was like, I cannot wait to hand you this stuff. And then right after I hung up accepting Damn. the, the uh, resignation or the, you know, the, the severance offer, I got a yeah. call on my company phone, um, offer me a promotion. And it was, it was, I mean, I was going to have probably like a 40, 45 grand pay raise. And so I'd have been making like six figures at 28. And I was like, nah, man, I think I'm gone. I think I'm gone. I think I'm just before I turn 30, I think I'm gonna go to LA. 
and uh, and then I got to by, by that August, me and another comedian moved out here, uh, got a got a shitty apartment. And mm-hmm. then a few months later, I booked a couple things with no manager, no agent, and then won the NBC um, diver- uh, uh, Center for Diversity that year. Mm-hmm. And honestly, did not want to win. I was like, I just need to come in second or make it to the showcase. <laughs> and I ended up winning. I was like, fuck. All right. Now I got to. <laughs> I, I love your outlook on life. It's just like, oh, man, I want to get fired. And they're like, promotion and then you're like i just i don't want to win second maybe and they're like winner it's just <laughs> it was like, you know always you know always looked at it, it's like i was looking at the 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 track record of like reality shows and i just remember that that the year of american Ida with ruben and clay and i was yeah. like clay had the career ah. ruben won but clay had the career he wasn't trapped and like both of them were just as known mm-hmm. and clay wasn't bound by words on a piece of paper but Ruben was, and it was like, dude, I want that versus having to be locked down. And then I couldn't get out of it. Uh, but luckily it did work out. I mean, like, you know, I learned a lot that year yeah. of having that deal with NBC, but yeah, it was, and I, I will always be grateful for it too, but definitely right. was not my goal at the time, but yeah, I it, uh, yeah, it. I mean, I, I would say between like fall 2010 and, and I guess leading into the fall 2011 is like, I, I got to figure this out. Got it. Quick question going back to the comedian for getting your name. Did you go by Tone Bell then? And or did yeah. that cause you? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so, I went by Tone Bell. Yeah. Yeah. So he he was just toned down. And he, he was a winner from the previous year hosting the show. So I mean, <laughs> me and him are buddies now, but I give him shit every time I see him about him forget my fucking name. Cause I mean, even when he forgot, he was like, Oh, dude, I'm not gonna lie, I forgot your name. So I just grabbed the mic and I was like, Don't worry about it. I don't know yours either. All right. <laughs> And then we just got into it and we had drinks that night and everything. And it was, it was, it was, it was funny. And we still make fun of it. I mean, I was 10 years ago, probably 11 years ago now. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's like I said, we, you know, we, we laugh about it all the time now, but uh, at the time I was like, motherfucker, this is my career. Are you kidding me? It's two syllables. It's two fucking syllables, you know? So uh, that's what I was thinking too. I was like, Stefan Satani might be a tough one to swallow, but like tone <laughs> bell, that's, Maybe that's why you didn't get it to the finals. They were like, that guy was really funny. What was his name? But just, you know uh... what? I learned a lot in that, in that next year. So I mean, I, I don't think I would have been ready had I gotten it that year either. So like I, I I, that year did a lot for me. I see. That's, yeah. that's awesome. So, so, I, so I think I, the timing was right. Oh, really cool. And then I also, speaking of timing and growth and everything, I just curious, your parents, I remember hearing, I can't remember which interview, but they ended up for your first show it was Christmas. And they drove all the way to Shreveport, Alabama for Nine your first hours show. to watch me bomb on Christmas Day. Oh no. Oh, it was no. uh I was I was it was like one of my first out of town feature weekends, and it was like a um the the headliner for that weekend. I'm gonna say headliner because he he's kind of a piece of shit, but uh, <laughs> the headliner for that weekend, uh I had a company car. So I had gone through a breakup that weekend. It was, I, my heat went out. I was slept by the oven. Um, it was like 12 inches of snow in Dallas and it kind of melted that morning. And because I was featuring, he, you know, you, you do the grunt work. So he, yep. uh, he was like, Hey, I need you to drive. And, but you can feature for me. I think I was making 400 bucks, which is probably the largest paycheck I've ever had doing stand up at the funny bonus report, which is known to be just, a, you know, at the time, like a shadier club, like checks bounce mm-hmm. and they don't pay you right away. And he and his girlfriend rode with me, and I had to stay at. Did I stay in a hotel? I felt like I stayed at a hotel because mm-hmm. I because money wasn't really like I, I I was doing okay, and my parents drove in because I hadn't seen them you know for Chris uh, for you know for holidays in a while, and uh, they drove in and they didn't the club the Christmas day. The show was supposed to start at eight. I walked up there at seven forty five. The club wasn't even open. There was nobody at the box office. The lights were off. So I hung around there for another 15, 20 minutes. Somebody was like, finally turned the lights on. I'm like, who's coming on Christmas? And I mean, this club fits like 400 people. I mean, there might've been 14 people there, maybe 17. Oh, man. Oh, man, and then my man. parents are two of the 14. And I think we did three or four shows. And man, I, I mean, they came to two. My parents came to two. The next day was a little better. I mean, maybe 40 people. I didn't bomb that day, but Christmas day. Ooh, did I eat it? Oh, man. It was rough. And then my friend, I remember my parents being like, this, this, you're going to stand up, huh? Is this what you're going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what that conversation was like after they drove nine hours. They, I can't imagine they would have been very supportive. Uh-huh. 
no, Which, it was, it was, it was, it was like, you got a nice corporate job. You get, you know, this is, you, you got insurance, all this kind of stuff. And then a few months yeah. later, I ended up getting my, um, one of the club owners or club, club managers at, uh, at Hyenas in Arlington moved out mm -hmm. to a small club in Tucson, Arizona and invited me and another comic to come headline a feature. And I taped those sets and some of the best sets I ever had. And oh, nice. my mom, I, you know, I sent it home. My mom ended up pressing them up on DVD and selling them in her office. And I'm like, I'm like, no, I don't want people to remember this. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. And they ended up going to your taping, what was it, nine years later of, uh, yeah. of your special? Yeah. Uh, how was that? How was the conversation yeah. after that? Oh, I mean, by then, TV's going. I got a couple movies under my belt. And it's like, no, no, we're very proud of him. We supported him the whole time. I was like, man, get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. <laughs> Oh man! That's so yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely different. I mean, especially you know, every, I think everybody gets that in comedy, unless you've just been, you know, Tracy Morgan funny, Eddie Murphy funny your whole life. But yeah, yeah. you know, you get those people that's like, I mean, you funny, but I like, are you funny to everybody? You funny to us? But you funny to everybody? And but yeah. I, but I knew I always had a knack for, you know, listening and then following up with something that was unexpected. So yes. starting starting off was the hard part. Closing was not the hard part. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you like, I mean, a lot of people, you ever been a joke saver? Like somebody who always thinks that they're funny and then they look at you to help save the joke. Like I was a joke saver heavy in high school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a, yeah, there's a chick who always thought she was hilarious and like she'd drop it and then look at me to be like, I'm like, oh, Jesus. Christ. And then I'd have to say something and save her fucking joke. And I'm like, she's like, ah, I'm hilarious. I was like, yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've been there. Definitely picking up the assists to, to get that <laughs> slam. That That is so funny. And it's so true, too. I mean, just thinking back on your special, you have some great bits that I've also seen. I know you're working on new material and going through some stuff and yeah. um, signing titties now, which is amazing. Uh, <laughs> and even on your special, too, which which is a couple of years old, I believe. But talking yeah, I shot, about... I shot in 19. I shot at the end of 18 and it came out in 19, yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Where well, there was some great stuff. One of my favorite bits was, to, I, and I love this. You were talking about getting a trainer, getting the the apocalypse body. And oh, on the, that. On, the, on the first special, on the Comedy Central special. Oh yes, yes, that's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah. And and, uh, and then the three to four was just, <laughs> I love it. I you, I love how you were able to take something that I would have thought, okay, there's no nectar here, but you just squeezed it and. A full cup of comedy. Was out, so. <laughs> it was. It was so. Uh, it was so. Uh, the. The. I mean, of course, you know, all stems from some real. And I was, you know, going to this athletic club and had this trainer, and he was like, "Come on, get up there." And I think I did three. He said, "You got one more." Like I don't have one more. That's why. I, that's all I did. I told you I don't have more. That's it. He was like, "Well, give me another set." I was like, "No, no, that's it. What you saw was what I had." And then, and then after a while, it just was like, "Is this funny? Is this?" is this a three, four, is it funny? And yeah. then somebody said, I forget, I forget who said it. Somebody, it might've been Neil Brennan or something uh, who, who heard it and he was like, cause he, Neil Brennan gave me the tag for the cliff, for the, for the, for the pull up on the side of the cliff. Oh, nice. I love that. Yeah. That was hilarious. Yeah. Oh, wow. um, That's but yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, uh, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I, then, you know, so, and some stuff is like, you know, you selfish with comedy sometimes. It's everything can't be for everybody. You know, it's it's like I hope the a mass crowd laughs at this, but if a few people get it, I'm good with that too. Yes. You yes. know what I mean? It's like even being like I'm 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 cool with being a Daryl. I don't need to be a Rick. It's like if you watch Walking Dead, you get it. If you don't, then that's fine. That's yes. fine. But like, but at the time that was my show, <laughs> and that's a comparison I'm making. Eighty percent of people are like, who the fuck are Rick and Daryl? <laughs> It's like it's not for you. Go watch Gossip Girls. This what this wasn't for you. <laughs> that uh, you know what there is some sort of sweetness to that though. Like you're exactly like you're saying because the people that get it, it's just they are able to nestle onto that joke that much more because they're like that's for me. And yeah. So it's like more more uh, quality nuance. too. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Nuance. Yeah. That's awesome. And I wanted to. I know you mentioned Neil Brennan and. Um, I had actually, I'd seen you hop on a show with Michael Yo, and I heard you on the, on Gary Owen's show talking about sometimes you might pop in if you're in the same town as Joe Coy. It seems like you have such good relationships with so many different comics. And it seems like, I know that it's a, well, maybe it's not, I was going to say it's a single player game, but like you are able to, I feel like your connections and the way that 
you work with people, it, you're just a, a good guy. And it seems like a lot of people trust you to come on their show, make people laugh, et cetera. And that yeah, seems people, unique people and special to me. Yeah, people have been very gracious. It's it's like, it's, uh, you know, I, I, try, I try to, I mean, pe people also know that I have, a, I'm a t I tell stories. So it's like, yeah. I also turn it down. You go, hey man, you wanna come on and do seven? I'm like, I'm not gonna, unless I can do 12, there's no point in me getting up there. But so I'll also be yeah, nice than yeah. that to go, I, I appreciate it, but, I, like that's why I don't go out after a lot of late night tests because I I that formula doesn't work for me anymore. Like I'm I'm more long winded and I and I prefer to take people on a journey. But if, if somebody mm -hmm. has that time for me, then of course I'll do it. I mean, it, and, and it's usually not about the money. It's 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 you know Michael, you invited me up to St. Louis because I have family there, and it was, hey, man, I come feature. For, I never got a chance to feature, like literally from that Funny Bone show. Um, that Tucson, Arizona. Mm -hmm. I did a feature weekend with, I did a feature show with uh, Trevor Noah once. Um, wow. So a couple one-nighters around. And I mean, I probably featured three or four times in my career, like for a weekend. So, I mean, I really jumped a lot of, you know, and it, and it wasn't comfortable. It was like, I wanted that experience, but I went straight from kind of opening and like, you know, every now and then maybe a one-nighter here or there, but I've never had that you know, feature for a weekend and just get my, get my sea legs. I jumped right into headlining, which was, I have the time, but I don't have a show yet. And, nice. and, and as far as a comedian who I'm, I'm fans of is like all the comics have a show. It's like, you know, when you watch that put together mm -hmm. set, you go start to finish. You're like, Oh man, there's a narrative here. It's kind of a theme. And it's, and there's, you know, I, mm -hmm. I like that. And so I was nervous about headlining up top, but it took me about two years to get very comfortable to go, I, I, you know, not gonna start tailoring and figure out segues, and, nice. and, but I've never gotten a chance to do that. So yeah, I mean, but, but yeah, I mean, like, you know, Joe, Joe took me away from my, I was headlining across town. Joe's like, man, come just hop on my show, man. Just come do, <laughs> come do like 15 on my show. And I was like, man, they're gonna hear about this shit and I'm gonna get in trouble. He's like, nah, nobody's gonna give a fuck. <laughs> so, 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 you know, Joe would do that for me. And like, I mean, Whitney called me one time. She had a one nighter in Arizona that she couldn't, that she couldn't yeah. make. And, um, and I was like, yeah, I'll take over. And I, and I thought maybe she, the dude who's featuring for her would just go to headline it. But then she called me to go, will you take this over for me? So she trusted me with that. But, but nice. yeah, man, I'm not a selfish dude, man. It's like however much time you want to do, even, even my, uh, I'll say my feature, but my buddy who features uh, with me for the, probably the last five, six years now, Rojo Perez. I mean, sometimes he does 20. Sometimes he's like, hey, man, I'm going to stretch out and have some fun tonight. I'm going to do like 40. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Now I got to do 110 to make people remember that I'm the headliner. But, but yeah, it's like, it's, those are the memories, you know, those are the memories you have. And, and I do think I have a pretty good rapport between even like club owners, managers and, and other comics. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it, it, it seems that way. Definitely. Which is, really I had a, wait, I forgot about this. I had a, um, I mean, probably, man, when, when is this? This is probably 2012. Mm -hmm. And I really want, I mean, I, th I think Bill was looking for, I don't know if he was looking for a feature, but I was like, I want a feature for Bill Burr, somebody who I, I'm like, I think I'm good. I'm completely different than, but I'm like, yeah. I can, I can keep up, I think. Mm -hmm. And, um, cause I do yell a lot, but it's like, my stuff is like personal versus, you know, I think we would have been like, I'm such a, plus I'm just a fan. You know what I mean? I'm just a huge right. fan. And so our, our managers hooked us up and I met Bill at the comedy store one night we were talking and I was already on Whitney. I think I had Whitney maybe had just gotten canceled. And then I think I was picking up bad judge going into that on NBC. And then mm -hmm. I'm sitting in the back of the comic store, we're sitting back in the, um, by the parking lot, the little back hallway. And uh, I talked to Bill, I'm like, hey man, you know, just big fan. And I don't know if you've ever seen me, but I think they sent you some materials, but you know, if it ever works out, I'd love to hop on the road with you, whatever. He's like, you know what? I think you're doing fine. Like you, you got a, uh, you know, TV and you're a good comic. And uh, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> You're doing great. What are you doing? Yeah, you don't need me. That's you don't need me. Yeah, you, can, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be where you are. I was like, fuck, man. Like, I'm, I want to be, you know, because TV was working out, but I, comedy wasn't like really popping for me yet. I mean, I was doing a couple weekends, but I right. wasn't into the improvs yet. You know, I mean, my home improv, yeah. like not, you know, still not really making money doing these college shows. And my college rate hadn't bumped up yet, but I was, uh, but, you know, such a fan of, of Bill for him to go, ah, you, yeah, you, you're doing all right. <laughs> oh, that's pretty what a wonderful way to like, absorb a compliment and the same time a rejection at the same time 
Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't need me. You don't need me. You don't need me. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. Wow, that's that's incredible. But also, I, uh, you know, experiences like that is like I got to figure this shit out of my own. Day. You know, I I got to go. Yeah. And since then, yeah. even Joe has yeah. been like, dude, you, you ever in town or want to hop on a couple of days? Call me, and then we'll figure out. You know how to how to. I'll figure out a couple of days to get you on. So I mean, it's always been super nice from from a lot of dudes. Um, I think Trevor nice. Noah was kind of surprised by me. I think I think because I think Hassan Minaj was doing the White House Correspondents Dinner that weekend, so he couldn't make it. So I got called out to see and, and work with Trevor. And I think Trevor came out from his dressing room to watch me in the wings. Like, oh shit, this motherfucker's like he's like funny. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it was it was it was great, man. He was great. That's awesome, and and I think that's really cool where. I know that it's definitely possible to be a successful comedian and successful actor, but I feel like you, it's more rare for sure. And mm. maybe that could cause some surprise amongst folks, but I don't know. I think it seems like you're continuing in both paths, continuing to reach more and more milestones in the future. Do you want to spend more time and attention on one or do you want to just keep growing in both or, or how do you see that? Uh, I mean, stand up is just such a, you know, I think anybody who's yeah. involved in comedy, you know, you, you get that it's, you're an addict. Yeah. You're an addict. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, just, I mean, I was in La Jolla this past Sunday and, and man, it's it, at the comedy store and it's, I took Sunday just to do stories I've never done before. I just did like 45 minutes of shit. I've never said on stage before. It's like, Hey, we're going, can we try some stuff, you know? And mm -hmm. is there something about it that's very, very, or I think Mo Ammer was like, dude, sometimes you just got to have fun. Don't quit worrying about the show all the time. Yeah. And you need an experience too. You already know mm -hmm. you're funny. The laugh is going to be there eventually. So don't worry about that. But like, what do you want to say? I mean, sometimes just like throw some shit out there. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Now, now, now you got a new challenge. Yeah. So now that's what I try to do. But yeah, I mean, stand up is just something special because it's, it's always every time you have on stage, it's a new puzzle to, to, to put back together, you know? And like, you can have the piece that you know, I mean, the bits that work are the corner pieces, you know what I mean? It's like, I know where mm -hmm. these go. Yeah. And then, you know, you get the borders done. It's like, all right, I know how to open, I know how to close this middle shit. What is going to happen here? Now I got to figure this yeah. out. And, and that's the exciting part. You know what I mean? If, if yeah. in acting, I love it, but it's, it's, and it's good to step outside of comedy sometimes because you get a breather, get a chance to reset yourself. So I do like both equally. And there's some stuff I do want to do in the theatrical space. But um, to be honest, man, I, I, I want to still grow to that level that people respect me as a stand-up and not. Because people think I've been acting longer than I've been doing stand-up. And it's like, I've been doing stand-up mm -hmm. 14 years now. And I got on TV 10, nine years ago. Mm. So it's, it's, and I've played comics in three shows, which I can't, I hate it. I hate when my characters are like, well, why, what, what if he does comedy? I'm like, why do y'all keep doing this? And then you make them bad at it. So then when I go, like, even I, I fought, I fought producers so hard on, on this jointed where like they wanted my character to be a comedian because of therapy. And I was like, you realize I do this already, right? Yeah. So now yeah. I'm going to go, people have never seen me before. Like, man, this dude really started doing stand up, And he's it's like, motherfucker, I've been, I've been doing stand up. <laughs> Tone, you're going to play John Levy, but you're going to be a comedian, okay? So can you put a couple of jokes in there between punches? It's, oh, man, it, it's, I mean, and, and then people go, you know, of course, doing roles like that, go right. back to see what else I've done, and then look me up and they go, oh, this dude's been doing comedy for a minute. So so that's been a nice discovery for people. But nice. man, it's, yeah, I mean, I, I do want to get to that point where um, people can separate me from the dramatic stuff or even like the sitcom stuff and just go, yeah. Yeah. Oh, his style of comedy is something we like. And you know, even 14 years in, I'm still trying to figure out, you know, pinpoint my voice, but I think it's coming. No, wow, that's awesome, man. I'm really <clears throat> thrilled to see what's to come because everything that's happened so far has been fantastic. So yeah, I'm trying that's... to shoot end of the year, man. So like it's hopefully it come out of top of next year. But like, yeah, I got some, I got some, I got some bangers right now, and I got some stuff that I'm still trying to figure out because it is digging me a fucking hole right now. <laughs> oh man uh I, you know going back to the puzzle piece metaphor i feel like that's such a good way to look at it too because i feel like a lot of people can be frustrated when they go on stage they try new things and it doesn't work and the the rejection and the lack of laughter that comedians crave so much because it's delicious yeah if, if yeah. they don't get it sometimes they get 
hangry and thinking about it as a puzzle where it's like, okay, well, this didn't work here. Let's try it here. Let's do this. I feel like that's such a nice pragmatic approach to it that can kind of stave off a little bit of the the rejection or the, oh, it didn't work. I'm, I'm sad. Or it's like, oh, yeah. it didn't work. Let's try again. Let's figure it out. I, I never, I, like my, my, I think my process has been in the last couple of years is like, I usually come back to LA with polished stuff and not that I do a lot. I mean, I, you know, I do improv and laugh factory and, and you know, the, the kind of like the big three in Hollywood, but not as mm -hmm. much as I think people think, but I really only go over there when I have material that's like, this shit should hit. Mm, and I don't yeah. get a lot of sets and, you know, more, probably more improv than anywhere else uh, in the city. But um I, cause I do the road so much. I mean, I'm still, you know, I still do 25, 35 weeks a year on the road. So in between shooting, whatever, I'm always gone. So like I'll Thursdays and Sundays are my nights to like work it out. Maybe yeah. Friday and Saturdays, try it out. And then when I stop, especially when I'm playing East coast, I go to New York and try to, you know, it works in the middle of the country, but if it doesn't work in New York, that shit is not fun to me. Yeah. That's just how I feel. Yeah. And I've bombed in New York a couple of times and you know, it's like, whew, all right, that, that shit was funny in Ohio. That shit was, <laughs> Illinois loved it. Wisconsin <laughs> fuck with it. Texas thought it was really good, but like nobody in Brooklyn thought this shit was good. <laughs> nobody in Manhattan thought this was good. So once I <laughs> once I fix it there, if I if I can get the laughs I want from the bit yeah. in New York, I'm like I think. So then I go back to LA when I'm done with a, a run, and now the shit is polished. And so now when I do you know do this set, it bangs. And it looks like it's new and perfected already. People are like, yo, where are you working this? I haven't seen you work this out. You left a month ago and it didn't work. And now you come back and it's that bitch is hitting. And it's like it's Kansas City, St. Louis, Columbus. Went to New York for two weeks. Boom, ran it there, came back here. Now I'm hitting you in the face with it. Like you never saw me having to crack it. Yeah, that's all. It's like going abroad and coming back with a kid. It's like, how did that happen? <laughs> well, like, well, secret. What well, do yeah. you mean he's seven? He's seven now? <laughs> I didn't even know she was pregnant. Who are you dating? How, how, wait, what? <laughs> oh, man. Well, that is all wonderful. Before we close, going to take five minutes to give some advice to some questions that some fans have sent in. Yeah. So we've got some there. And uh, before we do that, I like to get us centers and jazzed with an inspirational quote. So I've got one, but before I read mine, I like to ask my guests if you've got one, great. If not, fine. But um, do you have any inspirational quotes, tone that help get you motivated in your uh, unmotivated days? Um, I mean, this is not, I don't know if as much as, I guess it is a quote, but it's just something um, I guess when I say to myself all the time, when. Yeah. And I've been saying this since college and I mean like, you know, my frat brothers in college and we were all pledging all that kind of stuff. But it's, it's, it's like, I say it to myself all the time in those moments where, you know, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta write a, a package or do a revision on something. And I gotta send an mm -hmm. audition. And then I got two sets that night. And then I got a, a couple general meetings or then, you know, whatever, like it's, it's a fucking very stacked day, but mm -hmm. um, I didn't come to rest, you know? So, uh, it's you know sleep is for the week i guess is what i say to myself all the time it's like when i'm tired i go you'll you'll rest later yeah, yeah. you know i, I do want to be able to retire early you know i mean like my goal is probably the next like five years i want to be able to be like i'm doing this because i want to not because i need to buy, be able to buy milk and rice you know yes. so it's it's like sleep sleep is for the week just kind of keeps me going all the time um you know awesome that's, that's, I think it's so true. And sometimes it's like, especially when you've got as much as you do, or I mean, even anybody, it's like, you can prioritize and, and it's not like only sleep two hours, but like, right, right. shave an hour off or two hours off and focus on something that can be really impactful on your life. Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of people have that dream of being able to retire early, get that fuck you money so that they can. Well, my mom has been saying since I was young, man, my mom is like, even when I was like super young, like I'd run three, four weeks, just like hard, hard, hard. And then I take two days yeah. and I'll crash. And I still do that. Like I, I'll, I'll go so hard for three or four weeks. And then I'll mm -hmm. see like a, a Wednesday, Thursday. And I'm yeah. like, oh, I got nothing. And my whole team knows like my assistant will go, he's taking tone days. And I just, I'll smoke a joint all day. And I have wine and I just pass out. I mean, there was a one point where I was just drinking mimosas and eating uh <laughs> eating funyuns and chocolate. And I was just like, that was a that was a fucking day. I was like, airplane mode, it's it's tone day. Uh you 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 remember those um you remember the Cosby show? Or, or like the like the 
there was like that day where Cliff would, uh, he had orange soda and he'd have potato chips and he'd have a hoagie. Yeah. And he's like, I am not dad for another four hours. I'm just going to sit here, watch TV. <laughs> I'm going to eat this sandwich with chips in between it and drink. So, and it's like, this is my, I just need this eight hours for me. And so I often take those moments, but only after I, I just go and I can't, I mean, I, and I know because my brain slows up. That's, that's, I mean, right. it's, when I can't get my words together, I'm like, oh, I need, I need my day. Dang, dude. I, I'm going to take a tone day. Yep. This week too. <laughs> that sounds amazing. I love that. That's you should trademark that. Cause that sounds beautiful. I love that. Uh, well, amazing quote. I really like it. Very inspirational. I've got one too. It's not by any person per se. It's actually right. by a robot. And it's called Inspirobot. So its sole purpose is to use AI to take the wisest words known to man or woman and mash them together mm. for a beautiful inspirational quote. Okay. So Tone, let me know how this speaks to you. Sometimes okay. it's a hit, sometimes it's a miss. <clears throat> this week, Inspirobot says, make sure that everybody knows that you are ultimately full of quotes. Hmm. I think maybe make sure everyone knows that you are ultimately full of quotes. Yeah. D do you have a friend that's full of quotes? The, like the quote guy that always, when you're, you're down and they're like, I well, mean, every, 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 every black person has some other black person <laughs> in their life. Usually it's an uncle or somebody older who just, I mean, they just got, they just, I mean, they rip them off and you're like, how the fuck did you know, you hear shit like, man, I got more eyes in Mississippi. Like what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah, man, I got more eyes in Mississippi. You're like, how? <laughs> how? How did you think? You know what I mean? So it's yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. It's some people just have some people just have that that uh that that button. But you know what? It, I mean, if, if I have to break that down for myself, if uh, I I can see some sort of valor inspiration that quote. It's it's make sure you always have something to say that's worth hearing. I mean, I guess that's what I would take away from that. So yeah. that's. That's pretty good. Congratulations on being one of the first guests to decipher fully a quote from a robot because <laughs> that was well done. That made sense. Um, all right, we'll dive into just two questions and then sure. we will bid ourselves adieu. The first one, it's from Reddit and it was found by our fan, Jen. Thank you, Jen. It said, wife out wrestled and embarrassed my friend. I think I've lost a friend due to embarrassment. We had a party and we all started wrestling on the trampoline. My wife is a purple belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu and she made my friend tap out twice as well as myself and others he took it badly and left shortly after now he doesn't want to come over anymore either what can i do so let me get this right so some dude's wife wrestled another buddy one and now he's embarrassed to like show up again yeah yeah just like owned this friend i think maybe you <clears throat> i need to know, one one know what this wife does because if she's like if she owns like a, a a flower shop and she's also lethal then that's very embarrassing but if we all knew that this is what she does it was this a hidden talent or did, like if i find out afterwards like oh you know she's a purple belt like i'll be like god damn why'd you let me wrestle her you know what i mean but if i knew this beforehand and this is a trait that you that i knew was inside you then i'd be like man i think she should go out with us from now on because if we ever get into it at least i feel safe Oh, yes. Make her part of your entourage yeah. or arsenal. Yeah. Extra yeah. weapon there. And, and I think I, I was just going to say, I think you're right, too. I mean, if she was this dainty little flower with makeup, long hair and everything, then and it was a total surprise, then, yeah, I, I, that would be messed up. But if she, you know, her name's Brenda and she's big, barrel chested. She's got the short hair. The purple belt is hanging above the mantle. I feel if like I know if I know then that's his fault yeah you know what i mean i, I can't what, what are you gonna do with that what are you gonna do I, I that's like that's like if uh if i'm um <laughs> if if she's a if if uh if, if we're having like i don't know if you ever just had like a friend's cook-off or whatever but like oh yeah like you know just like we're doing like a cook-off potluck type thing and then you don't tell me that this motherfucker's a chef and then I'm butthurt about not winning or just like even not being fair. It's like, whoa, why would you hide chef, chefry from me? Yeah. <laughs> chef <-ry. laughs> yeah. I didn't know this. I thought we were going to use salt, pepper, and season. I don't know if these motherfuckers brought paprika. You know what I mean? I got you using spices I never, I don't even own. 
so it's like it's unfair but but you yeah i, I think that's a um that, that's that's on his that's on his that's his fault you can't be mad yeah. at that you can't be mad at that yeah yeah exactly <laughs> I feel the same way. All right. Last question. This one is also from Reddit from fan Otis. Thank you, Otis. It says, can I teach myself to fish? The thought of fishing really appeals to me, but I don't have any friends or anyone to learn with. I live right next to a river that I have seen people fishing at. I also live only a few minutes drive from the sea and harbors. Where do I even start? I would like to spend next to no money getting started in case I can't get into it. But where I live, pawn shops are due to open at the end of the month. Somebody please help. Hmm. So, uh, well, one, yes, you can teach yourself to fish. Uh, if he has read it, that means he has YouTube. So yes, you yes. can learn, you can learn to fish. Also, I think that if you have YouTube and you're hungry enough, you will learn how to fish, but if you don't need it and you're going to be that lazy, like that comment, he wasted time on this comment. We could have been looking at tutorials on YouTube. That's right. Right. Oh my God. I, they, they were smart enough to ask a community of Reddit, but then they didn't go to YouTube to search how to fish for beginners. Jesus. I feel like this person, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to make it in life. Really? It's, I mean, also when do you want to fish? Cause this is a, I mean, from what I know, I've never been fishing actually, but I've, I've wanted to go, but I've, it's never worked out. That's yeah. a, I mean, you know, from what I know, you got to be up at two, three in the morning to get the good stuff. You got to be out very silent. He sounds like he, you know, he has, <laughs> he has busy fingers because you're asking the world instead of sitting out there and being like, do I have this in me to be out before sunup? And it doesn't sound like it's the case. Yeah, it doesn't. It's yes. This person is definitely going to be out there 10 a.m with the Dorito bag, just popping chips into their mouth, being all crunchy and- Terrible idea. He's not about this life. He's not about no. this fishing life. No, no, no exactly. Stick, no. To, stick to the supermarket there, pal. Okay. Yeah, well, <laughs> we've reached the end of the podcast. Tone, first off, I just want to say a huge thank you for joining and telling me a little bit about yourself and giving some advice. Absolutely, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, yes, yeah, so it was fun, man. It's uh, and I'm glad you kept it to the time because some people look. Like, I've talked for two hours, man, but I'm hungry. My blood sugar's low. Oh yes, I I know I went over a little bit, and I'm so sorry <laughs> no, about no, we're that. We're good. But, we're good. But um, but thank you again. And and where can people find you? What have you got to plug? Where... Uh, I'm just at Tone Bell. Uh, T O N E B E L L. Uh, I'll be showing up on Black Lady Sketch Show on HBO this week, if I'm not mistaken. Um, mm -hmm. and a couple other things that'll that'll be dropping soon and. And uh, uh, pitching some stuff and back on tour. So yeah, I mean, I'll be around, but tone, but I usually answer, you know, so if somebody hits me up, then you got a question. It might not be right away, but, but I usually try yeah. to get to it. Oh, wow. Saved by the bell. That's beautiful. Well, Tone, thank you. I'm so sorry about that. I had, <laughs> we were doing so well, and then I just had to drop in for a but, pun. But, yeah, but, if you, but if you drop it at the, at the right time, it's fine. You know what I mean? If you, you, gotta, you can't start off with it. That's true. That would be tone deaf, I feel. So oh, there's another one. How, how so many you got? How many you got? Let's get them all out. <laughs> I, I actually, I wrote them all down. No, I'm kidding. Uh, you, you know what gets me is when people go, Tone Bell, oh, I get it. I'm like, well, get what? Like, my name is Anthony. I didn't, you thought I made up Tone Bell? I mean, I guess it is made up, but aren't all names? It's like, my name is Anthony Bell. People call me Tony or Tone. So like, it's just, this is my real name. Yeah, you know? yeah, so, yeah. I'm like, I don't know what you got. My, my brother, one of my brothers is named Anthony. So we call him Tone Tones. So yeah. I, I used know. to think Army Hammer was, was, was a good one, but you know, that's. <laughs> <laughs> that would, yeah. But Rip Campbell Torn is probably my new one. Rip Torn is, 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 I'm like, how can Rip, Corn, Rip Torn is fine. Like Tone Bell, get out of here. Tone Bell is, it's beautiful, beautiful. All right. Well, thank you, Tone. <laughs> thank you everybody for listening. And we'll talk at you next time. All right. Bye.